channel is Rachel. Um, sorry, this is my first video, so I keep staring at the viewfinder <laughs> instead of into the lens. I should be Casey Nysat and just wear sunnies, I guess. But anyways, um, I thought, or I was thinking about the fact that there's not many YouTubers, at least that I know of and watch, that are in college and studying science. Um, so I kind of thought I'd make a video of a college ecology major. <laughs> I don't know if that's interesting. Um, I think it is, mainly because I love biology, I love my major, um, and I love my school and my city. And anyways, I guess I'm just very happy. Also because I just had my last final yesterday. <laughs> And, um, anyways, so today is my first real day of winter break, and it feels really nice, but right now I still have a project going on. Um, it's in the research lab that I work in. I work in a, an, an endophyte lab on Tulane's campus, that's where I go to school, um, Tulane in New Orleans, and endophytes are microbes, so bacteria and fungus that live within plants. So in leaf tissue, in root tissue, um, that's what an endophyte is, and they either offer benefits to the plant, so they might help a plant be more resistant to um, fungus that is um, pathogenic or to bugs that are trying to eat that plant, to herbivores, they might help like relay resistance. Um, yeah, so endophytes are really cool. And I have a research project where I study Spartina alterniflora, which is a marsh grass. A dominant species in the marsh because it's very abundant, um, but it's really cool. It's a really cool grass. And um, so I have an experiment, a research experiment going on with Spartina. Um, I have 100 plants. Well, at the beginning it was 100 plants. Now I have a little bit less than 100 plants because of deaths. <laughs> Regardless, okay, so I'm studying them in terms of the oil spill. So in, what was it, 2012, 2011, 2012? I'll say what actual year it was on the screen, I guess, if I can figure out how to do that. Uh, video editing, new things. Anyways, um, yeah, so there was the Deep Horizon oil spill, the BP oil spill in the Gulf Coast, and lots of Louisiana marsh was affected by this oil spill. In, so in return, a lot of Spartina was affected by the oil spill. So after that, lots of different labs started doing research on uh, different organisms that were affected by the oil spill. And um, so the lab that I work in studies endophytes, so one of the research projects that she wanted to do in her lab was study um, Spartina and how oil affects it. So I have a little mini research project off of a, a graduate student in the lab is also studying Spartina in terms of endophytes and in terms of oil, and the research project that I'm doing is in relation to Spartina and oil, but not necessarily endophytes, because doing that research takes a lot more funds, and I did get a grant, I got like a $2,000 grant to do my little research project, but that doesn't cover, you know, d genetics work um, and culture work, which is required when you study endophytes. But, so my project, I have 100 plants of five different genotypes, so they're all the same species, so they're all alterna, spartina alterniflora, so Spartina genus species alterniflora, but a genotype would be like all the same species, but something about the genes that make it different. So in my case, my five different genotypes, it's one that grows naturally on the coast here, two actually, so I have like a Fushan type, which is it's like Fushan Bay, I think, um, and then Bay Jimmy, which is another area, so they separate them into being two different genotypes and uh, one from New York, so that one's obviously very different, but it's still the same species, which is kind of cool. Um, and then the two other ones are genotypes that were created for planting. So I have five different genotypes, they're all in buckets, and they're all receiving an oily water treatment. 
basically. Um, that experiment has been going on since the beginning-ish of the summer, since April. Now, we are starting to take measurements on the different tuna types. So, we're doing height measurements, diameter measurements, how many leaves, no, so leaves, so in grass, one node means one leaf. Um, we're doing like inflorescence, so the weight of um, the flowers that the gra each grass produces. Um, and they're each in little pots and they have um, a rhizome, which is like a root basically, and out of the rhizome will grow a bunch of different stems because it's a grass, so that's how grasses work. <laughs> They're really cool. I can make a lot of videos about plants, but okay, that's a grass. So um, yeah, so I'm taking all those measurements and I'm doing some today, which is why I'm making this video. <laughs> um, today I'm going to do some height and diameter measurements, and after the break, when I get back, we're going to be doing um, photosynthesis measurements. So there is this machine, it's called a Lycor, and you basically trap a leaf in this little chamber and it measures oxygen, carbon dioxide ratio that is in that little chamber. And that exchange rate, you can measure some rate of photosynthesis that you can then compare across all the different plants. So photosynthesis, and then I'm actually gonna be harvesting all my plants which is going to be sad, um, and doing biomass indexes, so, and carbon-nitrogen ratios. Um, so basically what the carbon-nitrogen nitro ratio does is it, it'll look at basically how much energy the plant has been putting into creating biomass. So diameter and height can only tell you so much because those plants might be very, um, might have a lot of air in them, um, but actually doing carbon nitrogen ratios, you can determine, you know, how much that that plant is putting into making tissue. And then um, other biomass indexes, you dry the plant to make sure all the water's gone, because um, again, that'll affect the weight. You dry it in this oven, and then you weigh it. Um, yeah, so we're going to be doing that for all five, all of the plants, um, biomass of roots and then biomass of shoots and getting a ratio of that as well because obviously that's very important for restoration work because spartina is a hardy grass and it will hold soil but if these genotypes vermilion that we that lsu has created puts more energy especially when exposed to oil into creating shoot biomass it's that's not great for um, restoration projects because you want spartina that'll create a large root mass, not necessarily be tall. And of course, being tall is important too for you know creating a habitat for the different organisms that live within and on spartina. But if you're doing restoration work, you want the roots to be hardy, basically, which makes a lot of sense. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about the results. Um, we show that. Um, there is a significant difference among these Spartina genotypes and that one would be the best for restoration projects. Um, right now, I have to go take some height measurements. So, but I have a smaller camera. Um, I can take some pictures and maybe some video and then I'll insert them right after this. Okay, well, thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye. So, this is my trusty chariot, my bike. Um, I don't have a car, so I take it everywhere. Um, this is how I'm getting to the greenhouse. See you there. One plant with can't even see that. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten stems. I usually get these things. They just like fall all over you. You know? Can you see them falling? <laughs> 
we started to get some sun coming in. So I just thought I'd show you how pretty it looks in here when the sun is shining. It looks like an actual marsh. 